Well, uh, welcome students. So far, we have been discussing about uh, seed come fertilizer drill, seed drill and uh, planters and uh, transplanters etc. Now, I will tell you another level of uh, technology that we have developed at IIT Kharagpur, which is GPS based automatic variable rate fertilizer application. We know that generally the nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus NPK are the most uh, important nutrients which are applied in the, uh, in the crop at various levels. Generally, uh, nitrogen is the one which is applied in different uh, doses and uh, potassium and phosphorus are not in those uh, number of doses. Now, question is how do we know what is the amount of nitrogen which is already available in the um, soil. It is important to know how much of uh, the nutrient is already present in the soil because uh, the soil um, is already um, uh, has another crop, previous crop, another previous crop. There could be some uh, nitrogen fixing, uh, fixing uh, 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 crops taken. So, it is possible that nitrogen is already there in that uh, field. So, it is very important to know what is the amount available at particular location in the field and how much we should apply so that we save there. So, um, on that basis we created, we have designed one uh, GPS based automatic variable rate fertilizer application system. What is a variable rate fertilizer application system? Uh, we, we desire, see, we would like to know at a particular, uh, as I said, at a particular location in the field, what is the amount of uh, nitrogen there and how much should be applied for the crop. Because it may happen that if you have large amount of um, already available and you put a certain amount, then excess of anything is bad. So, you will find that uh, if it is that uh, their amount, then there will be a problem. Now, advantages is it reduce the cost of production definitely, the input uh, cost minimize the wastage of fertilizer unnecessary and the reduce the risk of environmental pollution yes and on both counts the environment of the soil also will be hampered. So, these are the um, uh, benefits of the uh, variable rate fertilizer application. We would like to apply uh, uh, very, uh, fertilizer at varying rates in the different locations in the, uh, in the field. <coughs> Two basic methods of uh, implementing site specific inform uh, information for BRFA. In fact, there are two basic methods of implementing this. See what we want to know, how what is the uh, uh, level available at present and how much we should give. This is what we want to know, how best we can know. One is that we, we have a sensor, take the sensor and then go in the field and wherever uh, uh, the sensor tells us that the value is less than a particular value, we will record and then apply immediately on there. The, this is on the go or you can say that uh, sensor based approach. Now, another one is map based approach that means, we map the whole field and find out how what is the location of the uh, uh, of that field with respect to the other, other uh, parts. Uh, and then what is the content of the nutrients at various locations in that field. This is we create a map of that and on the basis of the map if we take the map and then use with the our uh, advanced technology of MATLAB and uh, other softwares through which we will be in a position to store this information. And then uh, when we go at that location the, the sensor will identify that this is the location where this much is to be applied and accordingly we can apply. So, this uh, in the map, map based approach we have two items the sensor based approach and map based approach. Nitrogen requirement of the soil we know algorithm for managing the fertilizer drop, sensor based approach dete detection of fertilizer present in the soil using sensors and map based approach as I say detection of the current grid using GPS and then of course, release of fertilizer both the system. So, this is a system by which we you either take this or this, but let me, but sensor based approach is still people are applying uh, trying in the world and we have not got any on the go sensor based approach for uh, doing this, but most of the people have done uh, map based approach and this map based mostly is that uh, the difficulty is that you need to create map for all the locations wherever you are there, but there are other aspects whether you should uh, when you should create whether you should create it after each and every crop 
or whether you should have a three year period and whether you should have a uh, how much uh, number of uh, samples you should take and things like that if you want to create a map based approach. Structure of the block now what will happen you have a GPS the GPS base you can have that a computer will be there then microcontroller then the DC motor a rake and pinion arrangement then the feed shaft with their variable rate application then you can have the chain and uh, chain drive and then the ground wheel. So, from the ground wheel you will get here and then the information will be there for variable application of the scene. Now, this is the conceptual diagram of a GPS based system here you, you can see this is the GPS uh, rover here then this is the satellite you know, here information the GPS antenna base which will be there outside and then the um, processor the GPS module in this and then here is the controlling unit and this is the location which we are going to apply. So, uh, the tractor movement is taking place in this direction. So, the conceptually this is this that we get information connecting these with the GPS which is there on the tractor itself then the base antenna is there and uh, GPS base antenna is there and the processor is there where we have stored the information and then when we the tractor goes to that particular grid or the location it identifies and uh, goes back to the processor and tells and accordingly this controlling unit will uh, do the job. Well, selection mapping of experimental field you should say, say for example, 20 by 40 meter field has been uh, um, uh, chosen here and you can see the grids which have been made here if, in, if you can see the grids which are made here and this. So, we are we are in a position to map this field. So, whole this is the process by which you should do we have done it at IIT Kharagpur and that is why we want to show you this information and for your knowledge uh, which you can add uh, and uh, do something better. Well, uh, survey of the experimental field with DGF differential GPS you, you can see that we will survey this is the one which is there at the base and then antenna and uh, we can go to different locations and survey the field. Uh, this is very important to know what are the locations and what is where at, at this position we, we must have. So, the survey of the experimental field with the DGPS that we do. Well, soil sampling see when we uh, uh, collection of soil sample in fact, see uh, collection of soil sample the soil uh, sample collection is very important from each of the grids you can see that these are the grids these are the grids over here. So, how many samples you should take as I showed you the field. So, in the field itself we should have different uh, grids and out of the grids the you should take optimum number of uh, samples. Maybe in a grid of say 5 meter by 5 meter or 2 meter by 2 meter you can take from the center and from the sides or the corners you can take or if it is a bigger one then you can take accordingly. Now, this depends on the designer on your mm, on your ingenuity on your own experience uh, etcetera and then this samples have to be taken to the laboratory and you can see that this is a very uh, tedious task, but we need to do it uh, for uh, uh, having the map because until unless you do this in the laboratory at large scale basis you will not have any information. And as a designer you must have such studies done for different locations to get a projected idea about a large uh, field this is uh, very important. Well, locations points experimental field with respect to true north and true east well this talks of the survey points of latitude and longitude uh, of the location here. Now, this is the one which we did at IIT Kharagpur that information is over given, given over here how is the rover when it is going to different locations what are the, the latitude and longitude at that place. It is important because this information has to be fed to the computer and um, uh, the software will read this uh, at the point when the tractor moves and goes to that particular location. So, the, it is very important to um, have this survey points latitude and longitude of that location this is the one which we have done at uh, Kharagpur and accordingly this uh, this has been created you need to create this for your requirement and these are basics information which uh, must be done.
well on the same basis uh, I, I can just tell you that uh, see the latitude longitude of experimental field at IIT Kharagpur this is the um, this is the location where we have and these are the all details of the points which have been surveyed here now this is the one which uh, is the available nitrogen selected field we can have uh, in fact we have uh, developed for uh, potassium and uh, phosphorus um, i mean p and k as well that means phosphorus p and uh, k also but uh, for nitrogen only i have shown you here that we have developed this particular um, uh, source that when you have this color about 200 kg of per hectare is available about 150 kg and 100 kg now this is the field now in the different grids that we can uh, these are the different grids and at those different grids this is the availability of nitrogen availability of nitrogen in the selected field this is one example of how do we do it when we take the information uh, uh, of gps differential dps take the soil samples the number of soil samples then um, uh, take them into the laboratory and find out the npk etc so we have created the maps of npk all but i am showing you only a map of n Well, we have also created a graph, uh, graphical user interface for grid identification. This is very important. Well, I am not giving you all details of this part because uh, these are all part of the IPR and all that. But these people have mm, is, is a very simple one which the students have uh, developed. Our student we have developed here and uh, uh, it is in a position to tell us as to see. Uh, what is the current uh, fertilizer rate at a particular um, grid code say here then the required uh, is this then the current length is this now this is this will talk of how much is the uh, uh, exposure that has to be given so you can see here that when it goes to a particular spot it will tell us the current location is this and then at a particular grid and this is the exposure length this is the exposure length we need to that means you need to explain here so it, it shows that calibration curve here I mean the slope of the calibration curve all details which which shows us uh, in the screen now this talks of the quit this go it is a very simple one this very effective one uh, for the designer which we have developed. This is the flow chart of the algorithm for automatic uh, fertilizer the flow chart well it is uh, it is worth giving the flow chart to you you can have an idea about this see the start of the program starts here what inputs it takes the uh, the inputs are in the um, comport board rate and fertilizer rate certain these are important uh, inputs when you go into details of the electronics part you will understand what they are but this uh, system we have developed at IIT Kharagpur and that gps data equations uh, and uh, processing the gds data which we have I have shown you earlier of latitude and longitude that information. Then uh, if uh, latitude longitude of a current location is matching, so there are certain uh, aspects which will talk of whether it is matching or not depending upon the requirement at particular ways. Then the uh, DC motor will actuate and set exposure length as I showed you in the GUI which was shown earlier. This is the flow chart for that. power train for uh, vrf system well this is a power train now we know that uh, this is the this is the uh, metering shaft here and then uh, these are the locations where uh, how we are in a position to operate this these are these um, individual uh, flutes which are which which are there and uh, then uh, this portion has been large here you can see the position sensor there is a position sensor which is connected over here and then this will operate at this location so that the uh, fluted roll can be adjusted uh, this shows the dc motor with rack and pinion arrangement so it will uh, this is the powertrain of the variable rate fertilizer applicate system which is there this talks of um, the one which is existing and if you want to design and uh, have a um, change in these it depends on you you can think of a new system whatever for fertilizer or um, for seed etc you can think of that this is a system which we have created and want to let you know well developed electronic circuit uh, we can show that here the uh, just uh, 
this is servo motor, the potentiometer, relay switch and Arduino unit all these are shown over here. One is the servo motor here, two here is the potentiometer in this case, the three here is the relay switch and uh, fourth is Arduino you know. So, we are in a position to show you and this is the unit which has been developed in the field and uh, in fact, uh, we have operated and this has uh, uh, given us a result which is very close to our uh, acceptability. Well, field test, we have done field test of this. Um, let me have a look at uh, this. The microcontroller, the microcontroller is here, the fertilizer applicator is here, then this is the DC motor at this location, then the roller position sensor, uh, roller position sensor, um, okay. then uh, base GPS is here, rover GPS is in this place. Now, then we are in a position to see in the field, this has been in fact, uh, uh, we have also operated this in the field and uh, we have measured. Uh, this is for experiment, so we have just uh, put uh, polythene in order to know that what is the amount which is falling when the system is working in the field. So, it is a field test uh, which we have done at this place to see whether our system has worked or not. So, this is one innovation that we have done at IIT Kharagpur and which is compared to anywhere world in fact, uh, a system and which is working. Well, when we compare this with uh, the output, the results of uh, these two, we find that uh, we are not very much off. The fertilizer application system, we find that we are in a position to, um, to give application rates between this to as low as 5 to about 400 kg. That means, for smaller seeds also we can do and as high as high application rate. And the variation in the application rate is not very much, it is very small. You can see the graph itself, you can see the uh, predicted and actual graph itself, uh, which will give you a, a good idea about this and uh, the actual fertilizer application and the theoretical fragile. So, you get a very good R square value of this, which says that the system has worked well and uh, there is a promise for this. Thank you very much.